In the early 1960s, music changed all over the world. A group of four men from England calling themselves the Beatles made it big and started what is known as the British Invasion. Suddenly new pop bands began popping up on both sides of the Atlantic. One such group called themselves the Turtles. After a few minor hits, they finally struck gold with their tune Happy Together. In 2003, the Turtles' lead singer, Howard Kaland, wrote a screenplay about his experiences right after the single became number one. Today I'm going to talk about the 2003 comedy film called My Dinner with Jimmy. <laughs> Hello there, old man Kelly here, Jeff to my friends, and you can call me Jeff. Welcome to another edition of The Stream Hunter. That's where I search out streaming services looking for little known films, rare gems if you please, and well, project my thoughts about these films into your ears. So today I'm going to talk about the film My Dinner with Jimmy from 2003. It's about Howard Kalin and the band The Turtles right after they made it big. It gets its name because Howard documented the time he met Jimi Hendrix in a club in England and they had dinner together. In fact, in an interview I read with Kalin, he said he originally made this as a 20-minute short just about his night with Hendrix. After he realized there was nothing he could do with a 20-minute film, he wrote more of his experiences, including getting out of the draft, playing on the Smothers Brothers show, and eating at a deli with Frank Zappa, Mama Cass, Jim Morrison, and others. In other words, he turned it into a feature-length film. Now, I've read many interviews with Kalen over the years, and he says that everything that is portrayed in this film actually happened. Along with the other people I've mentioned, they also met Graham Nash, Donovan, and the Beatles. Though he did say some of the events were condensed, like there's a scene at a diner after they played the whiskey at Go-Go. Those events all happened over a period of time. He just condensed them all into one evening, I guess, to make the film flow a little better. Anyway, it's a very low-budget film. The entire motion picture cost about $250,000 to make, which is nothing in today's money, or even 2003's money. Justin Hendry plays Howard Kalin, Jason Boggs plays Mark Bowman, Royal Watkins plays Jimi Hendrix, and the great George Wendt plays their manager, Bill Untley. It's also the last appearance of the wonderful Wendy Jo Sperber. You might remember Wendy from Back to the Future in which he plays Michael J. Fox's sister. Sadly, Wendy died just two years later at the young age of 47. Now, I enjoyed this film, and knowing that it was written by the guy who actually went through these experiences made it all that much more pleasurable. But now it's time for the good and the bad. Jeff Peaver of the Toronto Star said, More a collection of dubious, myth-serving, purple haze 60s sketches than anything else. I disagree, but uh, David Cornelius of DVDTalks.com says, We can groan over those terrible wigs all we want, but by the end of the picture, we're still taken in by Kalen's dizzying story. I agree there. And yes, the wigs are bad, but uh, what do you expect for a movie that would cost just a quarter of a million dollars? Now, as in many of these biopics, it's hard to cast actors to play real, famous, well-known people. It usually comes off as odd and, and can pull you out of a picture. This film is no exception. The portrayals of Jim Morrison and Frank Zappa didn't convince me that they were truly Morrison or Zappa. But I'm sure money, the budget of this film, had something to do with the casting. And then there's the music. Yes, real Turtles music was used in the film, which is terrific, but that's it. The makers of this film obviously couldn't afford music by the Beatles, the Doors, or Hendrix, and that really stands out, especially when they're at Graham Nash's apartment listening to Sgt. Pepper's Only Hearts Club Band. Now, in one part of the movie, they meet John, Paul, George, and Ringo at a bar and John mistreats one of the members of the Turtles so bad he causes the man to give up music. He flies back home and never plays guitar again. And though that really happened, I don't think it's exactly the way it's told in the film. But anyway, in an interview with Kaylin, he said years later he worked with John Lennon and Lennon apologized for what had happened that night. He was apparently very drunk. Now, like in all biopics, liberties were taken with the truth. But in this case, I don't think they were as bad as in some other movies that have come out over the years. Let's say 
Bohemian Rhapsody or The Elephant Man. Now, I'm not saying these are bad films. I'm just saying that they're not historically accurate. My Dinner with Jimmy gets a big thumbs up from the Stream Hunter. Now, if you'd like to see this motion picture, it's available right now on Amazon Prime for free if you have an account. And remember, if you've seen a movie recently that you think the public doesn't know about and it's worth watching, I'd love to hear about it. I'd love to put it on the show. So um, as long as it's not in the mainstream, tell me about it and we'll talk about it. Anyway, my name is Old Man Kelly, and before you leave, if you could subscribe, like, comment, all the usual YouTube stuff, you'll be my friend forever. This is Old Man Kelly saying thanks for watching. I'll be back soon with another film for you to watch. <laughs> Bang, 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 bang,